Hey, it's Jeff with DaringDino.com. In this video, you will learn how to create a wave of cubes in Blender. I'll cover how to make a wave animation loop seamlessly, how to make an object move up and down based on another mesh, and how to make a material that changes color based on an object's height. So let's get into it right now. I'll be making this project file available for free if you sign up for the Daring Dino newsletter at DaringDino.com slash newsletter. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll add a plane. So Shift A, Mesh, Plane. And let's scale it up to about eight with S and then eight on our number pad key and hit Enter. The next thing I wanna do is hit Control A and apply the scale. And let's rename this by double clicking on it and let's call this Wave Mesh. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is go into the Properties panel here and go to Modifiers, add a modifier, and in the Deform section, we're going to add a Wave modifier. Now, if I hit Alt-A and play it, it looks really bad, and that's because we don't have enough geometry in order for us to get a smooth result. So let's hit shift left arrow to jump back to the beginning of our project timeline, go into edit mode with tab, hit W to get into the specials menu and hit subdivide. And then the number of cuts, let's turn that up to 30. And then we can exit out of edit mode with tab. So now if I hit alt A, you can see what's going to happen here a lot better. And it looks pretty cool. So let's jump back to the beginning with shift left arrow. And now what we're going to do is figure out how to loop this seamlessly. So let me zoom in a little bit and let's also make this smooth shading just so that it looks a little bit better. Now, as this starts, you know, the waves haven't reached the end. So what I wanna do is look for when the waves reach the end over here in the corner And now we can start to look for when it's going to loop seamlessly. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out when this is flat and then figure out another time further down where it's flat again. And it might be helpful to go into shading here and turn matte cap on and use this, uh, this matte cap material just so we can see what this what the normals look like. And let's actually go to top view with seven. So it looks like the middle is flat right here and I can either set the start frame by hovering over here and hitting command C and command V to paste it in. So I'll do that here, command C, command V. Or the other way you can do it is by hitting S by hovering over the timeline, which sets the start frame. And then when you figure out the end frame, you hit E on your keyboard. I want to advance forward and then it looks like right around here is where it would come back because right here it looks the same. So I want to go one frame before that and hit E. So now if I hit Alt A to play this, it looks like it's looping seamlessly even though we've only got a few frames that we're working with here. So that's the easy way to do it. And you can use these exact numbers. I didn't change the wave modifier on purpose um, because then you should be able to do this without any problems. Let's turn off matte cap and let's add a cube. So shift A, add a cube. And let's go into edit mode. And I'll uh, go into side view mode with one or three, either one would work and hit G, Z, one, and this is just gonna move it up one unit so that the bottom, the origin, is exactly at the bottom. And we do that just to make scaling a little bit easier. Uh, it just works better that way. So the next thing I wanna do is add a constraint. So I go here, and then I wanna do shrink wrap. And then we just have to fill in a couple of things. So the target is basically telling it what do I want this object to shrink wrap to? And shrink wrap is just a way to make an object snap to the surface of another object. So the target, I want the wave mesh. And now if I hit Alt A, you can see how the cube is moving up and down based on that mesh that we gave it. Pretty cool. Um, I also found that changing this to be project and positive Z makes it work perfectly 
for this project here. I'm gonna resize this cube just a little bit. So let's go into top view mode, hit S to scale and shift Z because I don't wanna scale it in the Z direction. And we'll just make it about that size. Just so we have something that looks like that. It's, it's very skinny and it looks good. So control A and I'll just apply the scale there. All right, so this works, but how do we do a bunch of cubes? If you remember what our beginning project looked like, we want it to look like a bunch of cubes. So now we just need to add an array modifier. So let's go to modifiers, add modifier and generate array. And we're going to use relative offset and we're just gonna do 1.1. And then we wanna turn this number up to be 25. And then in top view mode, let's just move this down here so that we've got you know, plenty of boxes going. And we're doing the bottom corner here because we're gonna make the X and then we're gonna make the Y. So we'll just copy this one and we'll just change the offset to be zero in X and 1.1 in Y. And now we've got this big array of boxes, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing we need to do is apply these modifiers because Right now, if I play it, well, nothing's even gonna happen because the origin point is off of the base wave mesh. Um, but let's apply this and then apply that one. And now we've got a bunch of geometry here. So let's go into edit mode with tab and then hit P to separate by loose parts. And now we've got a bunch of different cubes. So then what we wanna do is set the origin based on geometry. Okay, so that didn't work, and if you look at this, you'll understand why. It's basing the constraint based on the geometry, the origin point here. So the waves are never reaching that high. So what we can do is we can just move our wave mesh up a little bit in just the Z. So let's just do something like that. And now you can see that it's working. It's working perfectly. The other thing I'm, I might do is delete these cubes that aren't getting displaced at all. But for this project, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but what I will do is move it so that this is more in the center of our project. So it looks like right around there. Just so we've got the most space used. Cool. So we don't need this mesh anymore, so we just need to hide it. Don't delete it, because if you delete it, um, your animation won't work, but we can just hide it because we're not using this as a render point. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, create a material for all of our cubes to use. And I'll just make a very basic one here and then hit A on your keyboard to select all of the objects. And the one that you had selected before should still be selected. And then control L materials and all of these cubes will now be using this material. And you can see all 625 of those cubes are using it. So let's call this height based color. And let's quickly save our file. All right, and let's go into compositing mode and let's go to that height based color material that we made. All right. so. I made a tutorial on how to do this, but I'll just go over it really quickly. But if you want to see a further explanation of this process, there's a link up in the top or down below. So the first node we want to add is input object info. And we're going to use this location vector to drive how it's, uh, how it's changing the color. And then with that vector, we want to separate the XYZ, there it is. And we're going to use the Z. So then we want to put that into a math node. So we go into converter math and we're gonna take the Z and multiply it by something. And I'll just put in two for now. We'll have to tweak this later. And let's just give ourselves a little bit of room here. Okay, and then we're gonna use this to drive a color ramp. 
and we'll put this value into here. And then the color goes into our shader, which I'm just using a diffuse shader for this, but we'll tweak this in just a second. All right. So what I did just there was I, uh, I have Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So if you select everything, hit Shift equals, and then you can scale it down or up. It makes your node tree look nice and clean. Let's make this color be red, and I'll make it so that the hue is 0 0.001, and then for the second flag, we'll do the hue of 0.999, and then we want it to be in HSL color mode and far. And what's that, what that is going to do is go from our first flag all the way around the color wheel the far way to the other flag. So we've got this great range of color. And you can see this isn't quite working here. So we just need to figure out um, what we need to do. And it probably is going to involve adjusting this multiply value. So you can see how it's starting to work. And there we go. Cool. So the other thing I'm going to do is actually add in another node. And I'm going to duplicate this multiply node because we want to change it to subtract. And we're going to subtract a value of 1 from it. And then our multiply should be working a little bit better now. So basically what we want to do is we want to make the peaks of our wave uh, purple and the troughs red. So we're going from here to here. So I need to turn this down a little bit and then add more to it, I think. Nope, I need to, oh, yeah. It's a lot of just tweaking this to get it exactly right. I think it's because I have extra cubes in here. Let's see. Let's just change this to add and see if we're... So we're getting there. We need to multiply it by... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to select everything and move it down on Z, so GZ. First thing we need to do is uh, let's change this to be an outliner view. And let's grab everything, including our base wave mesh here. And just move it down so that it's closer to. So let's actually delete this, use the Z, and multiply this by 2. Now it should work a little bit better. There we go. Ha! See, I knew it was something like that. So let's multiply it by a little bit more. See what we get here. Yeah, so I think with a little bit of finessing we could make this work a little bit. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving the objects around with G and Z in my viewport until I get the colors that I want, and then I'm adjusting this multiply value to be a little bit better. And then once you're done, we just want to hide this wave object down here. Cool, so that's how you do the color. So let's go back into default view, and I'm just going to use um, an add-on called create isocam. There we go. And I made a video on all of this stuff, and I'm just going to make a true isocam, and then I'm going to change the orthographic scale to be a little bit lower, just so that we zoom in, and then I'm going to move it around a little bit so that my scene is nice and symmetrical. So here's kind of what we're looking at. I'll, uh, I'll move this camera a little bit just so that the center is more centered. We'll render this out, and let's see what we got.
I hope you learned a lot about creating a wave of cubes in Blender. When you create a render with this method, feel free to let me know on Twitter at daring underscore dino and in the comments below. And don't forget, if you want to get free resources and great tutorials like this straight into your inbox, sign up for the Daring Dino newsletter at daringdino.com slash newsletter and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.